Seventy. Seven. Oh, number seven. Is it? Oh, in the paper. The paper.
She is great, isn't he? Uh, 65? 65. 65. <laughs> Sing that song next. Good. You just didn't tell me who was going to call it. <laughs> Anybody want to come up and sing? Come on. This is your meeting, too.
had enough. All of us have aches and pains, but we've had enough. And the Lord's here in the midst of us. And even though we cry a tear, he cried many. His heart was broken. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you all. Nice to have some of you I haven't seen in a while. It's good to have you back, especially Sister Mary. It's really nice to see you today. Thanks. And, uh, but to all of our friends and visitors, brothers and sisters, um, what a joyous day to be in the house today. Amen. Amen. We serve an amazing God, an awesome God. We sang Juan Grandes El with all the heart and spirit we could have. He must be proud. He's got to be happy. And when he's happy, guess what? We're going to be happy. Amen. And so we've invited him in to be a part of us and already feeling the spirit moving amongst us this morning. So keep a prayer in your heart that he continues to build the day as we go through the week. All right? So who's setting the table this morning? I am. You got to come. Yes. Uh, it is well with my soul. We're coming back. Sure. Woo. Woo. Woo.
to stay standing. Oh, Heavenly Father, it is truly well with our soul to think that our sin, not in part, but the whole, nailed to that cross to bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, oh my soul. What greater God can we ask for? To give his own son to die on Calvary's cross, to shed his blood for a man and a woman incapable of saving their own soul, only by the blood of Jesus Christ. Today, Father, we serve you with spirit and in truth. Today, with all that we have, and we beg your forgiveness, Father, for any part that we've held back. And pray today, Father, that you might come in and fill us with thy power, fill us with thy spirit, that whatever fears we might be fighting with today, Father, by the name of Jesus Christ, we might cast them out. So that we might, Father, lock arm and arm, united in spirit and in power, go forward into thy free kingdom. And so today, Father, we look forward to hearing words of life. We pray, stand with our brother today, loosen his tongue, sanctify it today, Father, that we might feel thy grace and thy power here. Be with us, Father, those that are less fortunate, strengthen. And be with the Church of Jesus Christ today, Father, wherever it might be established, that thy glory might shine, and that thy Son might be praised. Take this meeting and all we do now into thy care and keeping, for we ask it in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> if you're willing to agree, we're going to sing another song. You sound wonderful this morning. And you're going to like this one, but it's got a little pep. Number 351. Julie, do we have this? Now we'll sing another song. We're marching to Zion. Oh, yeah.
that vision, the people perish. In this church, we have a vision. We have a vision of answering the prayer that the Jesus Christ made to his Father in the New Testament. Everybody remember that prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What's the next one? Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Isn't it strange of all things to pray about? Jesus would pray that prayer and teach it to his disciples. He wanted us to be constantly aware that we're not here just coming to church. We're not here spending a few hours on Sunday trying to be good. We're here to learn how to build the kingdom of God upon the earth. And we're the most fortunate people. <coughs> because we have a roadmap. It's called the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon gives us the details of what's going to happen in the latter days. And I'm going to read one verse. I'm going to read it in Spanish. 29 chapter, 2 Nephi. Verse verse. But behold, there shall be many at that day when I shall proceed to do a marvelous work among them. I may remember my covenant which I have made of the children of men. I may set my hand a second time to recover my people which are the house of Israel. Más he aquí que habrá muchos el día en que yo empecé a ejecutar una obra maravillosa entre ellos a fin de recobrar los convenios que he hecho con los hijos de los hombres y pueda yo extender mi mano nuevamente por segunda vez para restablecer a los de mi pueblo que son de la casa de Israel. The world right now looks very shaky. El mundo ahorita se mira que los, los cosas no están bien. We have inflation. Este, los costos se están subiendo más y más. Gas prices are almost five dollars a gallon. Este, el precio de gasolina de enero son como cinco dólares por gallón. We have a war going on. Tenemos una guerra que está pasando. We have thousands of people trying to cross the border into America. Tenemos millones que están tratando de cruzar la frontera y llegar aquí a los Estados Unidos. We have COVID. Tenemos el COVID. And who knows what else? Y quién sabe qué más. Doesn't sound good, does it? No se escucha como que es bueno que no. But it's like when a woman has a baby. I don't know, you sisters, if you had good neighbors, but I saw something that absolutely scared me to death. Got the call that my daughter was in labor with our first grandson. And I thought we were going to go to the hospital. She was going to have the baby, and I'd be holding that baby before the end of the day. Wrong. No pasó. Twenty-seven hours of labor. The last hour, my wife was looking at the all the machines, all the monitors. Should do something. We're going to lose the baby. So I did. I went into the men's room and I got down on my knees. I said, Lord, you promised to help me when I need help. Before I got off my knees, the door opened up. And one of the friends said, John, John, he's here. And we're in that labor right now for the kingdom of God. 
Baby Zion is going to be born in our day and time. And we're seeing the signs. God has gone to his covenant people. He's gone to all the brothers and sisters that come up from Mexico and South America. He's gone to Oklahoma where we preached the gospel now for 10 years and 12 tribes. And right now he's in Window Rock, Arizona at the Church of Jesus Christ. And not only have a number of people been baptized this week, but this morning we're ordaining a Navajo man as a minister of the Church of Jesus Christ. And the first thing he's going to do is baptize his wife. He's going to baptize his wife as his first duty as a minister. It's a turning point. It's the beginning of the birthing of Zion. So all the problems we see, all the things we're experiencing, brothers and sisters, we're in labor. God has promised in our day and time that we would see the beginning of the kingdom of God. In 1988, after I was baptized, I was praying with one of our apostles. And that night I was taken up and I stood before the Lord Jesus Christ. For 21 minutes, he told me what I was supposed to do. I said, Lord, not me. I'm not worthy to do those things. And I told him all the sins, I rejected, all my sins, I started telling him. And he looked at me and he said, I died for those sins, John. And I knew I had just to go do what he told me. And you have to do what he's told you. Whatever he's put upon your heart to do good in this time of your life, whatever it is, do it. Don't wait till you're ready because you're never ready. I wasn't ready on my first mission trip. I didn't know what I should do. He knew what I should do. I found myself preaching to Italians who didn't know the Italian language. Two hours I preached. He knows the Italian language. He knows all the languages in the service. Our preparation has to be spiritual. We have to be in the Word of God every day. That prepares us to hear His voice when He speaks to us. We have to fast and pray on a regular basis and be silent so we can hear His voice. And when He tells us to do something, be quick. Because the, the time is short. I told you I was on an airplane and a little boy died. And I didn't know what to do. I was fighting within myself what I should do. And I saw they were calling for a doctor. And I said, okay, Lord, I'm going. In front of all those people, I grabbed my bottle of oil out of, out of the overhead. And the little boy was Mexican. 
About one, one and a half years old. He was totally blue, like our sister's shirt. He had not breathed. He's not breathing. The flight attendant told me to go take my seat. She was having an emergency. I said, no, I'm going to pray for that child. God's going to bring him back to life. Was I scared? Yeah. Yeah. Was I afraid of failing? Yes. But it's not my strength, it's his strength. So I picked that baby up and I stood it on the mother's lap. I said the worst prayer of my life. Lord, you made this kid. You know what's wrong with the pillow. In Jesus' name, amen. I walked back to my seat. I had my eyes closed when I opened my eyes. The little boy was looking at me just like this. He was looking at me from all the way up the other end of the plane. And I stood up with that plane and I started praising God. I thought I was going to be arrested. But I could add that to my story. It's not our battle. It's not our fight. It's his fight. We went to the Navajo Reservation multiple times this past year. We must ask the We've seen COVID heal. We've seen people sick. Made the hole right in our meeting. Say Benito. We've seen senior Native Americans in Navajo come to our church. And our church has been invited to the gathering of tribal nations in God is moving among the Native Americans like he promised in this verse. Thousands are coming to Jesus Christ. They're changing the world. And they will rise up as a spiritual power in Latin America. The Gentiles have lost it. We've chosen sin in this country versus righteousness. And the Book of Mormon says, only righteous people will live on this land. He says, if they spawn the sin, he will sweep them off the land. But he promised to raise up his hidden people. After I had that experience before Christ, I was in our Modesto church. They had two apostles and two evangelists on the roster. And they asked me to come up and sit down in the front. I said no. Brother Joe came down and grabbed me by the arm. He lifted me up and made me go up. Brother Paul Paul Mary preached the sermon. The woman with the issue of blood. Bartimaeus. And Zacchaeus climbed a tree. He says they did something different to get Jesus' attention. What are you doing different to get Jesus' attention? Think about it. Can you answer that right now? Next Sunday, I'm going to ask it again. He sat down, they asked me to say something. 
ellos se sentaron y me dijeron que yo platicara de Seattle. Now, I'm going to put my Bible and put Mormon like this on the rock. And so I put my body and my spirit separated. And my body and my spirit separated. My body and my spirit separated. My body and my spirit separated. My body was there, my spirit was behind it. Mi cuerpo estaba delante, el Espíritu mío estaba atrás de mí. And my body preached a sermon for 25 minutes. Y mi cuerpo estaba predicando un sermón por 25 minutos. And the spirit said, This is the generation we'll see the building of the kingdom of God upon the earth. Y él dijo, esta es la generación que va a mirar este hablando del reino de Dios aquí en la tierra. I'm probably one of the oldest people in this room right now. Puede ser que yo soy el más mayor en este cuarto. That means all of you got a good chance of seeing what's going to happen. Get rid of the fear. Get rid of the fear. Don't be afraid of gas prices. Or COVID. Or the war. Or the problems in America. Focus on Jesus Christ. There's no fear in Jesus. There's nothing he can't do. He is the God of heaven and earth. It is the desire of his heart that we build the kingdom of God upon the earth. And you know what it's going to be called? The church of Brother John brought up a good point. He said, uh, we're never ready. We're never ready. We never believe we're ready. And I'm going to bring it up in the book of Importante. He said, we never are ready. We never are ready for what we're going to do. I'm going to tell you a story about me. So put that in the story of that. De yo, de ser un servo de Dios. Many years ago, some 20 something years ago, I was approached by one of the ministers that I was told that they wanted to obtain a deacon. Este uno de los ministros vino a hablar conmigo y dijo que me hacen un contrato. And when we talked about it, I said, for what? Y le pregunté, ¿para qué? And he said to me, he says, well, we, we see what you're doing and the things you're doing are the kind of things that a deacon does. Y me explicó, me dijo, las cosas que tú estás haciendo en nuestra iglesia son las cosas que, las obras que hace un rápido en nuestra iglesia. Y que vamos a hacer un rápido en ese humano por quien yo era tica. Y me dice, no, I don't think so. Y me dice, no, no pienso así. Y me dijo, no, no pienso así. Y me dijo, no, no pienso así. Y me dijo, ponlo en la oración, pienso, ponlo en la oración. En otra pregunta, me planteó en el segundo día. Uh, gathering, they asked me again. They said, We want to ordain you deacon. Again, I refused. Me dijeron, en otra junta que me quisieron hacer un rato, me dijeron, No. Me dijeron, No. And then at that second gathering, they said, Well, well you know, we'll, we'll do it to give you a title. Me dijeron, Te la damos para que te den un título. I said, No. I told him, I will do whatever you ask of me, but I don't need to be ordained to keep it. I don't need a title. Again, we have to pray for the yoke of the oración. The truth is, I was a great. I believe that from the Vida no estaba listo. But they ordained me a deacon anyway. And he said, I don't know the same old record. I didn't feel ready. Years later, as we're coming to Fort Worth, oh. and we're going to preach the gospel, and we're going to tell people about Jesus Christ and about God. The brothers, they needed help, the ministers, Jeff and, and Joe, they needed help. And I was ready to help them to be in the back of the room to assist them in anything they needed, not in any other role. But I mean, it was a Fort Worth. It's the hermano Joe, the hermano Jeff, that's the hermano Judah. Because they were going to be able to help them in this city, to the people that they were conocing. Ellos necesitaban ayuda. Yo, yo les dije, yo te voy a ayudar, pero no está sentado atrás. Allá atrás, cuando está la hermana Julia, la hermana Vera. 
Ya le has estado sentado, pero yo traigo todo para que ustedes están preparados. I told the brothers, I'm going to take a seat in the back. I'm going to do whatever you need to support your core, so that you'll never sit up front. <laughs> we started coming to Fort Worth. Coming here, the brothers were preaching. At one time, they had Brother Jack, Brother Joe, Brother Tom, and Brother George. And they're preaching the gospel. And one day, was the Estamos listos los cuatro, el hermano Joe, el hermano Jeff, el hermano George y el hermano Tom predicando. Y el hermano George me dijo, un día tú vas a predicar que no estás loco. No es posible, no yo. ¿Por qué me vas a coger Dios a mí? Y dijo, dijo George, un día yo estaba predicando en inglés y tú la vas a poner en español para, que los, porque los que, para los que no entienden inglés. Y dije, no estás loco, no es posible. Brother George told me one day, he says, I'm going to be preaching the gospel to the Mexican people. And they can't understand me, and you're going to be next to me, translating, and you're going to be next to the other ministers translating for them. That's all Brother George, they're crazy. It's never going to happen. Never going to happen. I said, I don't like to be in front of people. I don't like the attention. I don't like being there. I'm afraid to speak. I'd rather sit in the back. He says, you ready? God will choose you. God will tell you. The mother George dijo, tú vas a, a predicar en español. Lo que yo digo en inglés, tú lo vas a poner en español. Dije, no, otra vez yo, sentado atrás. Eso no va a llegar a mí. Ya pasó, tú me estoy ahorita, aquí delante de ustedes. Por ejemplo, where am I at now? Here before you. I've never been there. I've never been there. But you know what? I don't have to be ready. Because God makes us ready. God makes you ready. God prepares us and God prepares you to do the things he wants you to do for his kingdom here, for his gospel, for his people, for the people of this world, for each and every one. When we pray and anoint for those that come up, it's not about us. It's about the power of God. He's the one that gets all the honor and glory. He's the one that receives all the honor and glory for everything that happens, for everything that takes place. Yo nunca estaba listo para hacer un, este, un dragón o, o para a, a dar una clase o ser un ministro. Pero sabes que no tengo que estar listo. Porque Dios es que nos va a preparar a mí, a mí y a mis hermanos y a ustedes. Porque cuando Dios dice, hazlo, lo tienes que hacer. Cuando Dios dice, tienes que predicar esta palabra, lo vas a predicar. Hay veces que Dios me dio un mensaje que era, cuando leí la escritura que él mismo que tiene que dar ese mensaje, me molestó. ¿Por qué me molestó? Porque esa escritura estaba diciendo que los hermanos y las hermanas estaban pecando, estaban en cosas malas. Y dije yo a mi mente, ¿cómo voy a predicar esta palabra a esta gente? Yo no miro eso. Y otra vez, tres veces me dio Dios esa, esa escritura que no sabía qué hacer. Entró miedo, como dijo el hermano John, entró miedo de predicar esa palabra. Le puso una oración y se le enseñé al hermano John. Y me dijo, en realidad, te dio Dios ese mensaje, y sí. Tuvimos en campo. Tuvimos un, este, un campo. En Lake Bridgeport, tuvimos un campo allá. Y cuando Dios me dio este mensaje, dije, Dije, yo, si vamos a dar este mensaje, lo tenemos que dar cuando todos están juntos. Dijo el hermano yo vamos a estar todos juntos en ese campo, vamos a estar aquí. Y dimos esa, ese mensaje. Y en esa junta, acuérdate, yo no quise dar el mensaje. Me dio miedo de platicar lo que me dio. En esa junta, varios se levantaron y dijo, ha pecado, ha hecho esto mal. Yo me quiero de, 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 de ir a este, de, de, de mi esposo, yo me quiero de, de boxear, yo me quiero hacer esto, y hay todas estas cosas malas. Cada quien se levantó y comenzó a decir las cosas malas que estaban haciendo. Esta noche todo cambió para nosotros. Estamos quebrados, estamos quebrados en ese tiempo. Pero ¿qué hizo Dios esa noche? Nos juntó a nosotros, a estar unidos entre todos. Y Él, nuestro Dios, Salvó a todos, todo lo que está pasando la vida de Dios. Nunca estamos preparados. Tenemos que seguir predicando la palabra de Dios. 
number of years ago. God gave me a message. He gave me a message that I needed to deliver. And I saw the scripture, and I thought, God, I can't do this. I can't deliver this message. This message talks about our brothers and sisters doing nothing but sin, living a bad life, wanting to not serve you. Lord gives me the message a second time. This is the message that you preach to my people. And I looked at it and I thought, I can't do this. I can't tell these people this. You read the scripture and it talks about how we are sinning and we are broken and we are causing division in our marriages. We're causing divisions in our families. I said, how can I preach this? This is my my people, this is our congregation. I was not a minister at the time. He said, how do I bring this forward? He brought it to me a third time. Strong, saying, preach this word. Can't do it. I'm afraid. Like a brother John said, I was afraid. I can't do it. I prayed about it. I met with brother Joe and explained to him what happened. He read the scripture, but are you serious? He said, yes. He said, I don't know what to do. I can't preach this word. I prayed about it for several weeks. And then we have the camp that we had here locally uh, near Lake Bridgeport. North, uh, North Side Marina. I told Brother Joe, this is the moment. This is when we're all there to camp. We preached that message. It was a hard message to hear. It's a hard message to deliver. And my brothers and sisters in Christ were sitting. They wanted to get divorced. They're having sex out of out of marriage. They're, they're doing all kinds of things that's wrong. I never saw it. God saw it. He saw it. That night, there was the healing of our congregation. Brother and sister after brother and sister stood up and said, I see. I've done wrong. I want to get divorced. I've been having sex with this other person out of marriage. This has been happening. I mean, this and this and this. And I thought, oh my gosh, what is happening to our people? What is happening to our people? They all humbly stood up and admitted the wrongs. And that night, we all came back together and humbled ourselves before the Lord. And we all united back together. Marriages that were broken, marriages that were about to go into force to this day are together. People that were together that shouldn't have been, made things right, got married. People that were that were drinking and doing what they wanted to do and getting into trouble, they changed their lives. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, we, me, are not ready. You are not ready. But when God gives you a message and a job to do, you need to do it. You need to do it. Because when you do it, is one, he's going to bless you. Two, he's going to take care of you. And three, there's a reason for it. Then you need to do it. Be mindful of how you treat each other. Be mindful of how you treat your relationship with God. Your relationship with God should be the best relationship in your life. The best person in your life is not your husband or your wife. It's Jesus Christ. It's God. And then you, then your husband and your wife, then your children, then everybody else. God comes first, and don't forget it. There's times the Lord gives me a message. And I take it. And I pray. And I clean up. And I learned my lesson. I learned that far. That message he gave me should have been delivered three months sooner. And I did. But we still delivered it. And hearts were healed. And souls were healed. And for that, I thank you. Es el mensaje que me dio Dios el día de la y me dijo tres meses antes, pero no lo hice hasta que tuvimos ese campo. Pero ¿qué pasó después de ese campo? Nosotros estamos unidos 100%. Yo aprendí un texto de lo que pasó ahí. Que cuando Dios me da un mensaje, lo tenemos que hacer. Hermanos y hermanas, prepárate. Si no estás preparado, comienza con este día que te vas a preparar. A poco a poco. Para que seas 100% con nuestro Dios. Brothers and sisters, if you're not prepared, if you're not ready, start to prepare yourself little by little, day by day. So soon you have 100% of the things that God wants to do. God bless you. I love you. Give yourself. Give yourself. Brother.
those sisters, I'm not going to say too much. Uh, it's going to be hard to follow what Brother John and Brother Juan was saying. But the key thing is Jesus Christ. This morning I woke up and I what time I had left, I read a few passages in the scriptures. And it's talking about the test of faith. And remember that Jesus did say. That the very hairs of our head are numbered. So when you think you're losing hope, you think you're losing faith, you think your 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 world's coming to an end, or you think that I have no more hope left in my life. Jesus knows. Because our hairs of our head are. But Lord, where are you? I'm praying, but I don't get an answer. And this is He created us in those people. He created the universe in those in the universe. He's a compassionate God. He's a loving God. We need to have a relationship with God. And we need to have a relationship with God. And we need to have a relationship with God. You want to know a secret? That's the secret. This is the secret. Have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, it's not easy. Most likely. Because this robe of flesh is in the way. Yes, the Dios is the Dios is the Dios. And he was made. He was made. But he's there. He was talking. He was talking. He was talking. We got to keep seeking. We got to keep seeking. We got to ask. We got to ask. We got to ask. Now, the scripture doesn't say how many times. I don't know. I don't know. But the more we ask, the more we ask. The more we ask. But the more we ask. The more we seek, the more we knock, the more we knock, it's always there. It's not. That's the whole thing now. It's not the whole thing. There's nothing in this earth that can give us any hope. Now, we have to work in life. Yes, we have to work. We have to make a living. God understands. And it was just how I had to study that. The Senor Sabe que tenemos que tener un trabajo. If an individual sitting here today says, I want to study John. Or a woman says, I, I'm losing hope. So if you lost your job, what shall you do? So si tienes tu trabajo, ¿qué debes hacer? Or I have no more hope, what shall I do? Y si no tienes esperanza, ¿qué debo hacer? I'll pray. I'll, 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 uh, I'll fast. I'll get into the word of God. Then I'll look for a job, so to speak. But if the person just sits there and prays, it doesn't move his feet to look for a job. How can God help that person? I can feel, I should say, I think I know, and I feel that when we ask God, and we have faith to move our feet, God is there. But if we pray and don't do nothing about it, but we need to ask the Lord and we need to move our feet. He will direct you. He will inspire you what to do. I'm going to read a few passages here because I know the time is getting away. Let's look at your something else to bring forth. But I'm going to read here in Matthew chapter 15, verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto Jesus, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is vexed with the devil. In other words, with an unclean spirit. I can have been the lost, he said, he had he, no mujer, 
una mujer cadenera que había saliendo de aquel región clamaba diciéndole Señor hijo de David ten misericordia de mí mi hija es gravemente atormentada por el demonio un demonio but Jesus answered her not a word pero Jesús no le respondió palabra and the disciples came and besought Jesus saying send this woman away entonces acercar acercarse a los discípulos le rogaron diciéndole des despidiera pues tan cosas tan nosotros for she's crying after us she's pestering us so to speak porque está este molestándonos but Jesus answered and said I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel y respondió diciendo esta es la palabra de Jesucristo no soy enviado sino a las ovejas perdidas de la casa de Israel now remember Jesus didn't say a word acuérdate que Jesucristo no dijo nada a la, a la mamá porque él sabe he knew the woman's heart él sabe y conocía el corazón de la madre then came she and worshipped him saying Lord help me y entonces ella vino y se postró ante él diciendo, Señor, socorra a mí. That's what we need to do in life today. Y lo que debemos hacer en nuestra vida hoy. When we praise the Lord, cuando ponemos una oración, dice Dios, ayúdame. I'm just a mere man. Yo no más soy un hombre. I need help. Yo necesito su ayuda. What inspiration do you have for me? ¿Qué inspiración tiene usted para mí? And what is this? And Jesus answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread to cast it to the dogs. And the woman said, True, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the masters. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh, woman, great is thy faith. Be unto thee, even as thou wilt, and your daughter will be healed at that very hour. Jesus le dijo, O oh, mujer grande, es tu fe, hagaste contigo como querías y su hija fue sanada desde aquella hora. Just like that Roman centurion soldier that told Jesus to say, well, just say the word because I don't think you're not willing to come into my room. Así como dijo ese soldado romano que no soy justo para que usted entra en esta por mi techo. But what did Jesus say? Que le dijo Jesús, you'll be your servant will be healed. Dijo tu siervo que tienes en tu casa ya sanó. And Jesus said. No, I have not found so great faith. No, not even in Israel. So we have to preserve the purity. Persevere in uh, true faith. To trust in God in all circumstances. And always remain true to Him. Even when we're in great trouble or distress or trials, hasta cuando tenemos grandísimas problemas o cosas que estamos tan molestando en nuestra vida, and this is the test of faith. Because sometimes we think, "Well, Lord, you're not hearing my prayers." Es desde la prueba de fe que hay veces que nosotros decimos, "Dios, usted no está oyendo mis oraciones." Are you there? Está ahí. And está ahí. He's waiting for me. He's waiting for you to go to him. Él nos está esperando a nosotros, a mí y a ti. Nosotros vamos a sonar y a tocar la puerta de él. And I know everybody sitting in this room has a, he has a plan for each one of us. Yo sé que Dios tiene un plan para cada uno que está aquí en este cuarto. Now this doesn't know it goes for you, but it goes for me. Eso no es no más para usted, pero para mí también. It goes for me too. Para mí también. May God bless you. Dios los bendiga. Meeting is open for your testimonies. Use the time wisely. <laughs> Quiero dar gracias a Dios que me ha dado muchos. Ayer le dije, Señor, está 
llorando y le dije, pero si no, enséñame. No, 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 no,